What's up everyone, I am Jason C, and today on the Master and Drone, we have the latest Larceny Barrel Proof from Heaven Hill, the A121. Now this was one of my most anticipated releases last year, but also one of my most disappointing as well. Did this get a little better in the new year, or will it disappoint me again? Let's find out today on the Master and Drone. Weeded bourbons which feature wheat rather than rye as their secondary grain to corn have become more popular than ever in recent years. So the term weeders were synonymous with famous bottles like Pappy Van Winkle and Weller have become out of reach both in availability and price. Thankfully, the demand for weeded bourbon has brought on a lot of line extensions and new offerings recently from big names in whiskey like Maker's Mark, Rebel, Old Fitzgerald, and Larceny. Now even more rare are available barrel-proof weeded bourbons. William Leroux Weller and Weller Full Proof have been the ones everyone chases and Maker's Mark Cast Strength has been the available on-the-shelf staple. Larceny Small Batch debuted in 2012 as the affordable and available weeded bourbon from Heaven Hill and budget version of the historic weeder Old Fitzgerald, or Old Fitz, or as I like to call it, Old Fitzy. Seeing that desire for available and full-proof weeded bourbons, in 2019 Heaven Hill released Larceny Barrel Proof for the first time Although it was very limited and I think was a release to test the market for cast strength weeded bourbons from Heaven Hill. So following those few special releases, the barrel proof version launched to the general public in January 2020, offering weeded bourbon lovers a more available and affordable option to Weller Full Proof at a very affordable 50 bucks. So Larceny Barrel Proof is released in three batches annually, just like one of my favorites, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, in January, May, and September. Now each year the releases are labeled with a code using a letter to indicate the sequence and three digits indicating the month and year. So this is the newest A121, which means batch A from January and then year 21, coming in at 114.8 proof. All right, so let's give A21 one more chance. Woo, all right. Now I said this did disappoint me a little bit last year. Uh, and while I could see many people liked it, it just didn't offer up the flavors I was looking for when it came to a weeded bourbon, especially a cast strength. It really wasn't as fruity as I'd hoped. Instead, it was very caramel and peanut and just tasted like a typical Heaven Hill flavor profile to me, which isn't a bad thing by any means. It just wasn't what I wanted in a weeded bourbon flavor profile, uh, especially, you know, coming off Weller or William LaRue Weller. I mean, I know I can't compare that to William LaRue Weller because this is a lot younger, but at the same time, you know, you're hoping some of those similar flavors are in there as a, you know, an alternative. So let's see if it got a little bit better. Here we go. By the way, this bourbon is a mix of six to eight year old bourbon batched together. It actually has a pretty nice nose on it. Got some good vanillas and caramels here. Definitely some oak, caramel corn, which is you would expect from a, from a Heaven Hill. All right, pretty good. Not bad on the nose. Let's see what it does on the palate. Here we go, guys. All right, so I haven't had one of these in a long time. So this one has a little bit more of a weeded bourbon profile than I remember, which is a good thing, because I really wasn't getting that in the earlier Larceny batches. All right, let's try a second sip and see what we pull out here. That's spicy for a weeded bourbon. <laughs> a lot of cinnamon, a lot of black pepper. I think for those of you out there that are used to a weeded bourbon, you know, being smooth and, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, when people say this, it's so smooth. I mean, if you go back in the day to, you know, Maker's Mark and they wanted to take out that, that, that rye spice and that, that harshness that a lot of people got in bourbon and they replace it with red winter wheat and then that's what they got. They got a smoother uh, bourbon flavor profile. But this is coming through like you would think there's some rye in there. It's got a lot of spice to it. Let's go for another sip. Yeah, vanilla, caramel, a lot of cinnamon and spice here, which I really like. There's a hint of fruit there, but it's mostly like dark sugars. 
caramels, even a little hint of maple syrup here, vanilla. But yeah, the spice is just hanging on, man. This is like way more spice than I thought would come from a, from a weeded bourbon. So last year when I was trying these, A, uh, I did not like A at all. I tried C and C was probably my favorite out of all of them last year. I don't have a C, but I do have a B. So let's, uh, let's do a quick comparison and see if this, this has evolved a little bit. All right, so this is the B520, uh, comes in 122.2 proof. Let's uh, do a quick comparison and see what we get here. Wow, the nose is pretty different. The B520 actually comes off more as a weeded bourbon. You get more of that weeded bourbon, that weeded grain that you could smell, especially on a younger uh, bourbon with some wheat in it. Uh, then you compare it to the A121. And the A121 is just way more candy sweet to me. Let's try the B520. See, the B520 to me was a little bit more fruit forward, which I kind of liked. But still, I'm still getting a lot of that cinnamon spice and that maple kick that I'm getting in A121. The A121 just coming off a little bit sweeter here. When you compare now, <laughs> the A121 is sweeter. I'll give it that. It has more candy sweetness in it, which a lot of people like from a good weeded bourbon. I mean, it's got maple, caramel, vanilla, some Cracker Jack notes, like a cotton candy thing going on with it as well as like, you know, that nuttiness that you get from a larceny, as I mentioned. The B520 though, um, I think just has more going on in terms of like mouthfeel to it. The A121, is just, it's very thin. It just kind of goes away really fast. I'm not sure if it's because it's a lower proof. Remember, it's only 116 proof. You know, when you're talking about a, you know, a barrel proof uh, a bourbon for my larceny. Go for another sip of the A121. It's weird, it's like you get all this sweetness up front, the caramel, the vanilla, the little, actually even a little bit of a butterscotch note there too with that maple. And then it just like disappears, it goes away so fast. And then on the back end, and then you just get hit with a punch of cinnamon and spice and pepper. So it, it's almost like a, a hamburger with no meat in the middle. Like you got the bun, which is nice and sweet, and then all that's in the middle is lettuce and tomato. There's, there's nothing there. And then that bottom bun, it just has got a lot of pepper on it. <laughs> and that and that just, that's the part that lingers on, but I'm not sure if that's something that weeded bourbon fans will like. Um, you know, even when you have Weller Foolproof and William Rue Weller and some of those, you know, the spice is there, but it's more in terms of proof. This has more of a actual like pepper or even red pepper spice that lingers on, cinnamon, Maybe not the typical weeded bourbon flavor profile for most, but you know, it's definitely got a lot more spice to it. One more sip of the B here, uh, the B520. I don't know, I mean, they're good. I could see why people would like these, especially a foolproof weeded bourbon, but there's nothing to me about this that makes it stand out. Like if, if two bourbons came in, you know, if two bourbons came in the store and one was Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and one was Larceny Barrel Proof, I would probably skip this. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, I'm buying every single time I see it. Doesn't matter what release it is, because they're all amazing and a little bit different. The only way I'm probably gonna buy a Larceny Barrel Proof again is if I've heard or if I've tried it before I buy it, and I know it's an exceptional release. I think the releases that are a little bit off are just very off and not my flavor profile. Whereas the ones that are really good, and I'm still waiting for one that's really good. I think the B520, even the C920, I think was a little bit more of a step up. And then we get to the first batch of, you know, 2021. And even though I like the sweetness to this, um, there's a lot of spice to it, and I feel it's just a little bit thin. All right, guys, we're gonna do one more quick comparison to the Maker's 46 cast strength. Now, this was a limited release last year that I absolutely love. And I just wanna see the differences between here. I don't think I've ever really compared these two. Now the makers, you talk about a weeded bourbon funk, like a grassy, weedy, you know, almost like a cereal type note to it. The makers 46 is all of that. But being the cast strength, the 46, it definitely has a little bit of that chocolate cherry note that I love. Again, the larceny is a lot more candy though. I will say, compared to this, this is a lot more wheat. This is, the Larson A121 is just a lot of candy. Let's try this one here. So it's an interesting comparison. When you compare the two, the Maker's 46 has a lot more of a weeded bourbon flavor profile. Now, it does have some interesting notes that you don't get in another weeder because of the, you know, the staves that they add here. 
which adds a little bit more of a chocolate, um, you know, type of flavor profile to it on the Makers 46. But there's not a ton of spice here. There's definitely a little bit of spice in the Makers 46, but it's a lot easier than what you're getting in the Larceny A121. The Larceny A21, like I said, it's a lot of sweet up front, it's a lot of spice on the back end, and a little bit thin overall. So I think what I'm gonna do is stick with my overall synopsis here, which is Larceny Barrel Proof, I think has become a try before you buy for me. Uh, especially if I hear there's a really good batch, uh, this is the best batch that they've had. I'll you know kind of see what's out there. Um, but overall, it's not like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof where when that thing comes out, I'm buying each and every one. And even though they could be a little bit different, they're still gonna be all kinds of wonderful in each batch. Whereas the Larceny Barrel Proof, you know, the differences could be, could mean, you know, the difference between spending a good 50 bucks and then regretting buying, you know, something for 50. All right, guys, well, hope you enjoyed this review for the brand new Larceny A121 Barrel Proof Bourbon. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this one yet, if you're kind of in the same boat as me when it comes to Larceny. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Has it become kind of one of those, if it's there, I'll buy it? Or do you want to try it before you buy it like, like I do? Always interested in hearing what you say, so leave a comment below. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on the Mash and Drum. Take care, everybody.